Hello everyone, my name is Rocco Incora and welcome to ISO Monitor Calibration for Photography Workflows using Color Navigator 7. The monitor is the most important piece of the jigsaw puzzle in your color management workflow as it is your only true window into your image file. And monitor calibration is a non-negotiable component of that workflow. The three most important components in my creative workflow are accuracy, efficiency and productivity. Accuracy because I want to make sure that the colours that I'm seeing on my screen are true. Quality, it really comes down to the end product that we're trying to produce for our clients. And efficiency is knowing that once I set my parameters in my monitor, they're not going to change. Time is money, efficiency is everything. Before we begin calibrating our monitor, let's talk about our viewing conditions. The colour temperature of the light around us affects our colour perception. Our eyes tend to always discount the colour of the illuminant. What that means is that if I hold a sheet of white paper underneath tungsten light, to my eyes it will appear white. And if we do the same by holding it outside in daylight, it will still appear white. Ideally what we want to do is set D50 lighting in our environment. To achieve D50 lighting, the first thing we need to do is to remove any strong coloured lighting from our environment. What that means is absolutely no fluorescent and no normal tungsten. If you have fluorescent light in your ceiling, you can try swapping them for some GDI color accurate tubes. Or if you have tungsten lights, you can try swapping those for cool white versions, balanced to 5000 Kelvin. But if you have down lights, you can then use the Solux 12 volt globes. The idea here is to make sure that the lights are not affecting our perception of how we see our screens by outputting light that is the wrong color. All monitors for graphics technology and for photography calibrate to an international standard. That standard is ISO 3664. Let's begin with the brightness levels of your monitor. It is recommended that the brightness be set anywhere between 80 to 100 candela per meter squared. This is for editing photographs on a screen. This setting, however, is going to depend on the brightness of your surroundings. For example, if you're working in a bright environment, as your eyes adjust to the ambient light, the monitor may appear too dark, as it might have been set to a low luminance value, and vice versa. As explained earlier, it is important to have the ideal viewing conditions for your monitor. 120 candela per meter square is a good starting point, and we can take things from there. The problem of having an overly bright screen is more evident when we print our work. If the screen is set too bright, then the resulting prints will be too dark. In other words, our screen is showing us the right colours, but just an overly bright version of those colours. For my editing environment, my screen is set to 100 candela per metre squared, as this gives me a good correlation between brightness of my screen and my prints. This, of course, may vary in your own editing environment. I will discuss matching print to screen in a later section of this video. ISO 3664 also stipulates the white point that we need to set our monitor to, and that is D65 or 6500 Kelvin. The gamma we leave at 2.2 or native. So now that we have our basic parameters to get started with monitor calibration, let's launch Color Navigator 7 and calibrate the monitor. We're inside our Color Navigator 7 software, and on the left hand side, we have our 10 different color modes. Now 1 to 8 are existing modes with um, pre-configured target values and we can access those uh, based upon uh, the different workflows that we might be engaging in, whether we're say working purely for, for web as web designers and want to employ perhaps an sRGB workflow. Um, all of the parameters are already preset in there and all we need to do is say calibrate or perhaps we could be doing video and uh, we, uh, we are using an REC709. But uh, color modes 9 and 10 are essentially empty and we can use them to enter our own target settings depending on what state we want to calibrate our monitor to. Now in each of these of course we can have multiple targets. The 10 different color modes can be accessed by pressing the mode button on the front of the screen. By pressing the button, we can quickly change our monitor 
to a different calibrated state. So let's select uh, our Cal1 color mode and inside of that we are going to create a new target. And the target we are going to create will be um, ISO 3664 for our editing work. And we're going to enter, of course, our values manually. Just click onto the arrow here. And the first thing that we need to do, I guess, is give the target a name. So we're going to call this ISO 3664. And another thing I want to do also with the, with the profile is um, put in the brightness uh, of the monitor that I'm calibrating to because with ISO 3664 the recommended um, uh, brightness is anywhere between you know 64 to 160 but this really comes down to the environment that uh, that you're in we discussed earlier about the monitor being the brightest thing in your field of view so just as a, as a rule of thumb here 120 candela if you were in an overly bright room or a or a standard sort of office environment with uh, lots of lighting, uh, because we still need the monitor to be the brightest thing in our field of view, uh, that would be um, a really good brightness to use, 120 candela. However, if we bring that uh, brightness uh, down, which is recommended for editing, anywhere between say 32 to 64 lux, 64 lux is what I'm using in my environment, I have that right down to say 100 candela. So here in the name, I'm going to put 100 candela so that I know that ISO 3664 at 100 candela is what I've calibrated to. Now, another thing here is that if I click onto this uh, checkbox and set color mode name, um, what I can do, I'll just move these out to the side. What I can do is I can call this, um, say, editing, and what this will do, once I finish, the, of course, setting the target parameters, it will change that mode name from Cal1 to editing. And of course, inside of that, I can have multiple targets if I, if I want to. So by clicking that, I'm changing the name of the mode as well. Okay, so we've set our brightness. Let's move down to black level, which we'll leave at minimum. White point, color temperature, we'll leave at 6,500. Our gamma, we leave that at 2.2. Our priority is going to be standard as this is a screen based target. The gamut will leave as native and I'll explain a little bit later in this video the difference between native and standard value. And the ICC profile policy will leave as is at every calibration. Once we're happy with all this, we'll hit OK. So on the left hand side here we have the parameters that we've entered for our target and if we're happy with all of that we'll hit calibrate we'll choose our measurement device this monitor that i'm using has a built-in sensor if your monitor doesn't have to have a built-in sensor and you need to connect an external one whichever one you connect to your computer will appear here in this menu we'll hit next and we'll click on to proceed to calibrate the monitor. Once calibration is complete, we can see our results here on the right hand side based upon our brightness settings and of course our white point and the contrast that we have achieved for our monitor. We'll click on finish. We can see here on the left hand side that editing now has become one of our color modes which I can easily access through the mode button at the front of the monitor and of course also in the Color Navigator software. One of the great features of uh, Color Navigator 7 in conjunction of course with the ISO monitors is the ability for the software to control when um, the monitor is calibrated um, automatically of course without you actually being present. So if we go here in the monitor settings and we go into management uh, policy here we can actually specify how often we want our monitor calibrated and when we want it calibrated. So I do periodic calibration and I have enable self calibration box ticked and I can either do it by usage time. In other words, after X amount of hours here specified, the monitor will go and calibrate itself based on the um, parameters that um, of the current um, profile that we're in. Or what I like to do is actually pick a specific uh, date 
uh, or a specific um, in a specific time. So I have mine calibrating weekly, and it calibrates every Monday at um, 7 a.m. So I have this set to 7 a.m. What that means is um, every Monday morning at 7 a.m. before I walk into the studio, uh, the monitor will uh, do its thing. It will um, it will calibrate and um, it won't interrupt with uh, any production time whatsoever. And this is an awesome time-saving feature of uh, Color Navigator 7 in conjunction with the ISO monitor. I want to explain a little bit more about the gamut um, of the monitor itself and the gamut option inside Color Navigator 7. Inside here we have two options, whether we tick the native box or the standard value. In other words, we either calibrate with um, all of the colors that the monitor can display, or we limit those colors to a specific color space, whether it's Adobe or sRGB and so on, depending on your workflow. Now, 99.9% .9 of the time, I am ticking native for the very simple reason I'm working in a big color space, ProPhoto RGB, and I'm outputting to a fine art um, paper with a custom profile, and I'm able to print some really, really um, extensive colors and I'm going to show you the difference of uh, ticking these two boxes and um, how those two different um, options plot out onto the spectrum locus as far as their respective uh, profiles so here we're in a program called color think I'm going to switch on my profile uh, which has been created using the native uh, option and this is what it looks like and this is what it looks like compared against the Adobe RGB, which is a solid red line. So you can see that the monitor is actually able to display a lot more colors outside of Adobe RGB in certain areas. As a comparison now, if we turn on uh, ProPhoto RGB, which is the, the far far larger, larger color space, you can see that um, the monitor, even though it can't show us ProPhoto RGB colors, it's certainly showing us a lot more colors than Adobe RGB. And this is why I choose native when I'm actually um, calibrating my monitor. Now, having said that, of course, um, there is no right or wrong, depending, like I said, on your workflow. And if your workflow evolves around Adobe RGB, well, then so be it. You know, we'll you know keep on doing your calibration to Adobe RGB because you might be, I don't know, we're outputting to to a commercial lab, and this is what they require of you, and these are the colors that you want to that you want to work with. But at the end of the day, whether you choose native or standard value will really depend on your personal workflow.